welcome back to part three of peanut butter and jellyfish. We were thinking about this over the last couple of days, having picked it up from our cabinet guy, and as we were collecting the components to go in here, it occurred to me that he may not have drilled the hole to allow the power cord for the power supply out of the back of the cabinet. I did give Jim a telephone call and he confirmed that no, there is no hole in the back of the cabinet. So I uh, need to unwrap this and I need to be careful because this is that gloss laminate. We tried leaving the protective layer on there, um, but I still want to be real careful about it. Um, so I need to get in there and drill about a one inch hole in the base of the cabinet. Uh, also, as I had sent the instructions for the assembly of this via a link to a web page that I've already constructed on how to assemble the Jelly Aquarium cabinet, I realized that again, this being the maple and it's also finished on the inside, uh, there are no uh, set holes or starter holes or holes, for lack of a better description, to attach the um, uh, the power supply itself down inside there, so I'm going to drill those holes for the guy as well. So that's what we need to start out doing. Let's get to work. One of the first things when starting any new project is to define your work area. I'll lay down some utility pads here in the driveway, creating an environment that allows me to kneel down alongside the cabinet or lie the cabinet on its back. We'll start here by unwrapping the cabinet, and hopefully I don't make myself dizzy. So as you can see, the inside of the cabinet is finished as well, and there is no uh, exit for the uh, power cord. So I'm going to drill that hole. I'm also going to drill a hole for his um, power supply. So I started wondering where was the best location for that power supply, and decided the answer was the best location is best for the filter. So let's put the filter in there and then we can find the location. This is the power supply. To me, from a business standpoint, this is my greatest liability right here. Now, my two choices were to provide uh, an electrical power supply inside the cabinet or to not. To do the not thing would look kind of tacky considering this is a $10,000 Jelly Aquarium freestanding cabinet system. And that would then force the customer to seek out a power strip which just makes it look even worse. Uh, this here again is the main power supply. This is the power cord that I need to drill the hole out of the back side of the cabinet for. This is what you would plug into your uh, household outlet. But this here, again, is the, the most uh, critical, dare I say, deadly aspect of manufacturing anything, and that's dealing with electrical. And so I had these made specifically for me. It basically consists of two enclosed power uh, quad uh, boxes, and the first thing that the power coming into the unit runs into is a GFI. Now, personally, as an aquarium hobbyist, I find GFIs um, frightening uh, because they're so safe that they'll trip on almost any reason, uh, which is to err to the side of safety. But in the case of a, a fish tank, it tends to make me a little nervous. As a hobby, as a, a manufacturer, uh, this is something that helps prevent me from killing people. Um, so the first thing that this power supply runs into is a... a GFI, ground fault indicator uh, circuit, which if there's something that is wrong with any of the electrical plugged into it, it'll sense that through some means um, and it'll trip a little breaker. Um, it then flows into two outlets, 110 volt outlets. Uh, these outlets are the power supplies for the water pump uh, as well as the refrigeration unit, more specifically the uh, thermostat for the refrigeration unit. It then sends power over into the next unit, which has got a uh, timer in there, a little overly complicated timer, but there's a timer in there that you can plug your fluorescent lights into. Uh, again, it's a little overly complicated. I think it'll do um, uh, some things that you never really thought that a calendar could do, a digital calendar could do. So anyhow, what I need to do now is um, find the proper location in there, mark the holes, and pre-drill that for the customer. 
So the trick with the power supply is to mount it in a position that's obviously elevated above the floor of the cabinet so if any water were to spill it wouldn't go into the unit. Um, but since I've had these enclosures also included onto this unit, once again I consider the electrical portion to be the most liable or, or, or deadly aspect of the entire system. And so as a manufacturer I want to take care to make sure that uh, no problems could emanate from that. And so with these enclosures or lids, I have to be able to make sure that when they're mounted, you can still lift up the doors themselves. So I'll go ahead and position the outlet boxes where I think they should best be. I'll double check by opening up the covers to those boxes just to make sure that I've got plenty of access. Once I'm comfortable with the location, I'll then take and mark the spots where I can drill the holes so that later I can mount the outlet boxes inside the cabinet. Now we'll go ahead and put the uh, hole saw itself on. I've got the starter going. Okay. I'll be using what's called a hole saw. It's an attachment that you can put on the end of a drill and actually drill a round hole. Go ahead and stop there and we're going to go on the back side and cut that out first so that when we punch through we don't tear the laminate punching through on the other side and you can see our exit hole there so we're going to go ahead and drill that out from this side And voila, there we have a power cord exit hole. Actually, I didn't expect the inside of the cabinet to be finished as well, so that's a good thing for uh, from a seal or waterproofing standpoint. Although there is no lip on the front, so it could just flow right on out. And now with the power cord exit successfully drilled through the back of the cabinet, I need to lay the cabinet on its back so I can drill the holes for mounting the power outlet boxes at a later time. Of course, how do you open the cabinet doors now with it lying on its back? The idea behind the design of this cabinet was its sleekness. Therefore, it has no knobs on it, which kind of makes it hard to open up the doors if it's lying on its back. This cabinet uses the little spring-loaded push button tabs to pop the doors open. See? More than one way to skin a cat. Always just keep moving forward. And like I said, there's always more than one way to skin a cat or to open a cabinet door. Are you ready for the Marine Aquarium Expo this coming March 31st through April 1st of 2012? This is the largest aquarium consumer trade show in North America and a destination spot for marine hobbyists. Held at the newly remodeled OC Farron Event Center and featuring over 100 exhibitors, speakers, demonstrations, and a huge product raffle. There's even a fin zone for entertaining young hobbyists. That's the Marine Aquarium Expo at the Orange County Fairgrounds this coming March 31st through April 1st, 2012, Saturday 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Sunday 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Adults $15, senior and military only $10, kids under 12 are free. For more information, visit MarineAquariumExpo.com. Hello, my name is Jim Stein. I'm with Midwater Systems, and I'm the developer of the Jelly Aquarium. The Jelly Aquarium is a tank designed specifically for the keeping of jellyfish. I offer five different sizes of tanks designed to be built into a wall or a freestanding cabinet. I also offer the inexpensive Mini Jelly Aquarium, which has its filter system built into its backside. Additionally, I offer tank-raised moon jellyfish, as well as a line of tanks designed for producing your own jellyfish. For more information on this fascinating world of keeping jellyfish, visit jellyquarium.com.
So with a battery operated drill, I'll start the pilot holes to help mount the power outlet boxes. Having completed the first of four pilot holes, I'll move over and start on the second hole. And just as I'm getting ready to start drilling the third hole, it occurs to me I might be better off if I actually place the outlet box there just to make sure I get the holes in the correct spot. Such a beautiful cabinet. I don't want to have to drill more than four holes or more than what I need. I certainly don't want it to look like target practice. And with the third hole just barely started, I think I'll take the marker and mark the fourth hole while I've got the outlet box in place. I'll now go ahead and remove the outlet box entirely, knowing that the third and the fourth hole are exactly where they should be. So now with all four mounting holes pre-drilled, we could actually take and mount the outlet boxes inside the cabinet, but I think I'd rather put them in the packaging with all the other items so they can be a little bit more secure. So I got to thinking about how I could uh, package the screws. I mean, you can always take and put them in a little um, piece of tape and maybe put it inside that electrical box. And then I thought, well, you know, maybe the smartest place to store the screws is just right in the laminate itself. That way they know what it represents. And uh, if I get them in there snugly, they shouldn't fall out. And they're only half inch screws into three quarter inch thick plywood. And I'm not screwing them in all the way. Also, we've got the thickness of the uh, the thumbs uh, on the side of the uh, power supply. So anyhow, I uh, have accomplished everything I set out to do today. Um, we're going to um, start going through our inventory and determining what um, extra plumbing fittings we need to go pick up tomorrow. And then we'll take this down to the crating company on Thursday, uh, match it up with the tank the manufacturer's building, and uh, get it crated and shipped out. Actually, there's one more thing that we need to do. That is to paint the inside of the hole for the power cord so that it doesn't stand out and actually looks better and finished. And so that's the current scoop on jellyfish tank sales. We never did hear back from our buddy Bucky, but that's a path he decided to choose and we learned something out of it and that is again, don't put the customer in contact with the service company until some money's been transpired or placed in your hand first. We did, by the way, get a check in the mail from that doctor in Louisiana, so that kind of clears that up. Uh, we're going to be loading this cabinet as well as the refrigeration unit, the uh, filter, and all the various parts and fittings into the van now. We'll take that down to the crating company in the morning, have them crate it up and ship out. And one bright thing on the horizon, we did get an email from a potential customer of all places in Switzerland. It's a couple of guys who have a service business there, and their customers okayed the purchase of a 36-inch jelly aquarium. So I'm kind of waiting for that money to land in the uh, bank account first before I get too excited, but um, it is something to be excited about. And so until I meet you next time, always stay positive, and always keep moving forward.